Hello, and welcome to our educational video series. The principle of underwater seal drainage was a major turning point in thoracic surgery. It allowed surgeons to operate on the chest, then be able to close the thoracic cavity and re expand the lung. In this video, we will explain the basic principle behind the chest tube drainage system. Generally, a chest drainage system has three chambers, compartmentalized into a single plastic unit for easy use and transport. Manufactured by different companies, it duplicates the old three glass bottles, or chambers, placed in series. The three chambers chest drainage system consists of, a first bottle, that serves as a collection chamber. A second bottle, that serves as a water seal chamber. And a third bottle, that serves as suction limiter chamber. Positive pressure, gravity and suction, are the three basic principles, used in the closed chest drainage system. The drainage system, must always be kept lower than the patient's chest. The positive pressure created by the air or the fluid inside the pleural space, will seek to relieve itself to a lower pressure underwater. If suction is needed and added, the air or the fluid will be drained more rapidly. For many years, most chest drainages involve the use of only one bottle water seal system. It comes with an airtight cap and two vent tubes. One vent tube connects to the patient's chest tube. It is submerged, 2-5 to five centimeters under sterile water, and allows some room from the bottom of the bottle so the air can escape. This provides a one-way valve, that prevents a backflow of air into the pleural cavity. This tube needs to be deep enough, so that it will remain submerged as water evaporates over time. The second vent tube is shorter, above water level, and is open to atmosphere. As air or fluid from the pleural cavity enters the collection bottle, the air is vented out and the fluid level rises within the bottle. The drawback of this system is, as the fluid continues to accumulate, it causes increased resistance to drainage. A higher positive pressure would be needed to generate more flow of air or fluid. A two-bottle system can alleviate this issue. The one-bottle system would have been perfect if only air was being drained from the pleural cavity. Here, a second bottle is added. One vent tube is connected to the patient's chest tube. The other vent tube is connected to the water seal bottle. With this system now, one can monitor the amount and the type of chest drainage and does not have to vigil the water level in the water seal bottle. Occasionally, more negative pressure is needed to forcefully remove more air or fluid and help re-expand the lung. However, this negative pressure will need to be controlled to prevent damage to the lung, therefore, the third bottle. Two centimeters turned out to be a depth that allowed for some evaporation without adding too much resistance. Would 1.5 centimeters depth be acceptable? Probably yes, it would protect the patient with a one-way valve, but with just a little evaporation, we could risk the end of the tube, no being completely submerged. Would 2.5 centimeters depth be acceptable? Yes, but it will create more resistance than 2 centimeters depth. In this image, a third bottle, the suction control bottle, is added, not only to add suction, but also to control the amount of suction. The long middle vent tube is adjustable and is open to atmosphere. It is submerged below a water level by convention 20 centimeters. The depth, in centimeter, helps determine the amount of suction applied to the system. I would say that the depth, plays the role of a suction limiter. The depth of the movable middle tube in the suction chamber, acts as an indicator of the amount of the negative pressure that is transmitted to the chest. Adjusting either the height of the water column, or the depth of the atmospheric vent tip, sets the negative pressure exerted in the chest tube. When the wall vacuum system is turned on, the pressure in the third bottle is reduced, and air is sucked in from the atmosphere to the bottom of the chamber where it bubbles up. Let's say for example, that the drainage system is not yet connected to suction, the level of water inside the middle tube would be at the same level of the water in that same bottle. Now, with that same middle vent submerged to a depth of 20 centimeters under the water, let's apply minus 20 of suction, the water level inside the tube, will go down by 20 centimeters with no visible bubble yet. Applying suction slightly higher than minus 20, will cause bubbling, and that is what is conventionally accepted in current practice. During system operation, if you need to increase or decrease the amount of suction applied to the drainage system, adjust the height of the water of the middle vent tube accordingly, by either adding or removing water, then apply suction, until gentle bubbling is seen, and that indicates that the suction is being regulated to the height of the water column. An in vitro study, showed that if high flow is utilized, the pleural drainage system might exert excessive, and potentially dangerous high negative pressure. To our knowledge, there is no study, 
that supports an optimal level of negative pressure to drain the pleural cavity. The minus 20 of negative pressure has been the traditional pressure used. It was suggested that the idea evolved from the original bottle size and setup. It was the preferred amount of suction used back in the 1970s by thoracic surgeons. With a dry suction water seal drain that was subsequently developed, one can deliver the desired suction, minus 10, up to minus 40, by simply adjusting a dial, and turning up the suction until the small orange bellows appears in the indicator window. With this system, there is no continuous bubbling, and the system is much quieter. Whether you are using the dry or the wet system, always start by setting the desired suction, then turning up the wall suction, until the system indicates that you reach that pressure, which means dental bubbling or inflated bellows. In summary, underwater sealed drains are routinely inserted to drain the pleural space and allow expansion of the lungs and restoration of negative pressure in the thoracic cavity. Understanding the principle of the three bottle pleural drainage system is important to ensure proper chest tube management. This concludes our video. Thank you very much for your attention. Please visit our YouTube channel for more educational videos. And for any comment or suggestion, please don't hesitate to leave us a message below. Goodbye.